sort of places to look at. And the Explorers Way is the drive route, Adelaide to Darwin, uh, and you can go two routes, the bitumen up from Port Augusta to Coober Pedy to Alice Springs to Darwin, or really basically the Flinders Ranges route over there to the right via um, Wilpina, Ar well, you don't go to Arkarula really, uh, into Maree, and then around to William Creek and across to Cooper Pedy that way. Um, that would be a, probably the, by far the more scenic route, but slightly longer. Um, just mention, for those of you who don't know, that Australia had problems. They were trying to kind of brand our national parks the way uh, North America brands its national parks, but you can't because there's 555 national parks in Australia, some of them very dinky, and governments get killed if they try to delist a national park. So the arrangement is getting me on the Rock the Reef and the Opera House to add about another dozen um, landscapes or areas in as the top 15 landscapes. And on that route there, if you look down at the very bottom, you've got Kangaroo Island, um, you've got the Flinders Ranges, you've got the Red Centre Way just from Alice Springs out to um, Uluru, and just to the right of Darwin at the very top is Kakadu. Not a bad way, I suggest, in time for you to start thinking about packaging uh, you know, and selling tours to um, your customers. It's early days yet for the National Landscape Program. It's only about five years old and still getting traction. But um, I think it's a way of con conceiving um, how to make sense of Australia to your visitors. That's, uh, that's a and particularly the outback, that's a great way to do it. Um, and look, that's it from me. They're my contact details. That's our website. Carlin is for the middle A in the middle, a uh, silent A in the middle. And look, I'm happy to take questions now or email me and I'll get back to you with uh, more detailed information. It is, I have to say, an absolutely vast region, quite complex in its logistics. And um, what I knew six months ago, I occasionally don't know now. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Peter. So what we're going to do is open it up for any questions, because I know Peter's covered quite a lot uh, in terms of accommodation, experiences, and tours. So while we're uh, while we're just waiting, if you could just type any questions that you've got into the chat box there. Peter, I've just got a question while we're waiting about the hot air ballooning. When is that scheduled to start? Uh, in April, I can't tell you the exact day, but they're going to do um, uh, uh, probably early April, I think, through to, as I said, October, definitely, and maybe November, if opportunistically the weather's good. Uh, this is a very good... Can yeah. we disclose what company that will be yet? Yeah, Out Outback Ballooning. They run in Canberra and Alice Springs there. I think um, very well organised in terms of marketing, distribution, and as well as the technical side of the job. Um, Last year, when it, when it was run, we had the occasional um, you know, bad weather, so the balloons can be cancelled from time to time, but that's ballooning anywhere. Um, but everyone has gone up, says so it's fantastic, including the bush breakfast afterwards. Great. And do we it's have an approximate price point on that? And do we know if any of the local operators are going to be packaging that in to the... They will be. Rawnsley Park, Rawnsley Park will. Uh, will Pina will, I expect, for two. Uh, I'm not sure about Arkaba. The um, uh, the price point last year, I haven't actually checked the price point for this year, was $330 Australian. It might be a bit more this year. Okay. I didn't check that one. I've got a couple of questions coming through, so we might address them. I've got a question from Cheryl. Generally, how far in advance do you have to book Cooper PD Underground Hotel to guarantee the underground rooms? It depends on seasonality, I think. Um, and um, I, I don't think you have to sort of book hugely in advance. Um, they're, um, they've been very full with Lake Eyre, with Australians, in the last year, that, that area. Cooper Feet has become quite a hub for tourism into Lake Eyre for Australians. But, and it's got a mining boom around it, which is sort of putting some pressure on. But by and large, I've never heard Rob Corro from the Desert Cave tell me, or any of those other places that they have, you know, that you have to book months in advance. So you're pretty right, you know, at relatively short notice to get someone in there. Yeah, I think they have up, 18 rooms right. total underground, is it, Peter? Uh, at least, yes, and there are other rooms uh, above ground and so forth. Not that I recommend them. I mean, if you want the premium experience, the underground is the area. There are a couple of underground ground bed and breakfasts, by the way, out there, which are well worth looking into, too, down to earth. There's one, and I forget the name of the other. 
uh, looked at them both. They're really very nice. Set up as literally an underground bed and breakfast. And if your um, your people want to act like backpackers for a day, they can pitch a tent in the underground uh, camping ground. Uh, one of the one of the motels does that. And also with the underground hotel, if a guest isn't able to secure the actual underground room, um, many other parts of the hotel do offer that underground experience. Um, so they can they can get that without actually having to stay in one of the underground rooms. Yes, that's right. They do. You you get uh, an excellent experience there. It's just whether the underground room is available. But normally, in my experience, when I've been up there, I've never had trouble booking in. There's normally vacancies. Okay, we've got a question from Melody. Uh, with the slide talking about Banksy's four-day tour, have we got an approximate price for that? Sorry, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, I gave you some pricing at one point there, didn't I? Uh, no, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry, Melody. No, no, we'll get back to you on that because I am a little unsure on that as well. It's been a little while since I've looked at their rates for that four-day tour. I've got their data in front of me, but I'm not sure the pricing's on it. Right, okay, well, I think uh, I think that's all the questions that we have time for today. But if you do have any other thoughts or questions following the webinar, uh, please send them to Peter, as we've mentioned. We'll also actually, uh, Melody, Melody, just to the point here. Interestingly enough, they don't have a price on that one, but the three-day tour is fifteen hundred and fifty dollars Australian. And I know that both yeah. India and Bookerby are working with the larger trade wholesalers in this market, so you shouldn't have any problem booking either of those tours. So once again, thanks, Peter, for coming in so early for us. And no, no, it's not, not as bad for me as it was for Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you also, Matt. We appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> and when, when you send your guests to Australian winter, make sure they come and see the Adelaide Crows play in an Australian rules footy game. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so our next webinar is going to be held on the 22nd of March at 2 p.m. Pacific time and we are going to be inviting Paul Mullen who is the regional manager from the Limestone Coast. So if you've got clients that want to do the Great Ocean Road through to Adelaide, perhaps through to Kangaroo Island, uh, please don't miss that session. So with that being Said, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the 22nd of March. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you, everyone.